Welcome to the October 26th Inspiring Author Conversations. I'm Kathy Davis, Davis Creative Publishing, and today we'll be speaking with Kevin DeRosier about the rise of AI writing tools, friend or foe. Before we get into that, a few little minor details. The call is being recorded and you will receive a recording, a link to the YouTube recording within about 48 hours after the call. Your attendance at these meetings serves as your permission to be seen in the recordings. Please mute yourself on your end to block out any background noise and find your chat button down at the bottom. I will be watching the, the questions to make sure that we get all of the questions over to Kevin. And we promise to end the call around noon or 12.15, depending on the number of questions that we get. Our theme for 2023 is growing your business by the book. Each month, we welcome guests who inspire authors by sharing knowledge, new ideas, opportunities, and wisdom. Sometimes they are authors, and sometimes they are people who also support authors, and Kevin happens to fall in that category. So please help me welcome Kevin DeRosier. He's a professional speaker, public speaking coach, and award-winning author. He's been featured speaker at an in-person conferences in Australia, South Africa, and several cities in the U.S. Kevin also coaches business leaders in the art of public speaking and has coached executives at two of the largest corporations in St. Louis. In his book, Bridge Over Adversity, True Stories About Overcoming Personal Challenges, you learn the 11 keys to overcoming any challenge life sends your way through the stories of 12 people who have faced severe adversity in their lives and triumphed. In both 22 and 23, he was named the best author in St. Louis by the readers of St. Louis Magazine. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you. So, Kevin, uh, you and I know each other a couple ways uh, through St. Louis Publishers Association, as well as the National Speakers Association on a local level here in St. Louis. So our, our paths continue to cross. I'm thrilled that you could be here today. What got, oh, you, what got you interested in the AI movement? Well, I actually was at National Speakers Association. One of our speakers showed us an example how people are using AI. And it, it was a rather bad example in how they're using it because it's how they steal other people's material and claim it as their own. So that got me interested and I just started researching it. And then I also heard more about AI at the Influence Conference, National Speakers Association yearly conference uh, this past year and just am captivated by it. Awesome. The Have you, I your book has been published, what year did, was that published in? October of 2021. And as you consult with the authors that, and speakers that you work with, what do you typically recommend when it comes to AI? I recommend a couple things with AI. First of all, I do not recommend using AI to write your book. Uh, and, and I went through an exercise on that too. I took the first chapter of my book, or the second chapter of my book, and I plugged it into AI and said, rewrite this in the format of, or in the words of Stephen Covey. And oh my gosh, it was so much better than mine. It wasn't even funny. But to me, that's not my work. And I, I don't do that. What I would use AI for is something different. And that is, give me a summary of my book. And AI knows my book. It goes out there, it gets it. It'll give me a 80 word summary, a hundred word summary, whatever I type in, whatever I ask it to. And when somebody asks me, give me a good summary of your book. I'll get that as a starting point, not as my final summary of my book. And then I will wordsmith it in my words, but it finds the key points and it does a great job in doing that. If I'm speaking about something, I may ask it when I'm speaking about my book, I may ask it, give me 10 possible titles for a talk about the book, Bridge Over Adversity, Two Stories About Overcoming Personal Challenges. It gives better titles than I would ever come up with. Same with if I want to blog about it, it will give me blog titles, but I don't use it to write my content. So do you think that there's a an ethical line that it kind of is a moving target pretty much with AI? How, what's your personal perspective on that? For me, you know, it's a personal thing. I would never... And I know somebody that is writing a book by themselves 
And then they take that chapter and they're doing that. They're saying, write it in the in the style of Stephen Covey or write it in the style of whoever an author is in their genre that has a lot of sales. To me, that is going, that's crossing the line of ethics. Some people are comfortable with that. And I, I'll leave that up to you, but I, I would never do that. And I, I just really like to limit it to, you know, helping me get some titles and a few things. So when authors approach me and say, how would you use it? Maybe give me a few ideas. You know, what are some areas, if you're writing a book on cooking, where are some good sources for recipes and what are some good recipes? And you get those and now you use them. And I, I use uh, I use perplexity instead of chat GPT because perplexity gives me the sources. So now I can cite those sources. Perplexity.ai, when it gives you whatever it's giving you, tells you where it grabbed all that information from. So, and it gives you a link to it. So now I can go see where that information came from. I can cite that information in my book or whatever I'm writing and say, according to Kathy Davis, this, 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 and this, and that. So I, I like to use AI that gives me the sources as well as just to prompt me. And then I want to make sure those sources are properly recognized. And that's what I tell authors is don't just use AI to write a book. You see people right now coming out with a book a week, a book a month, a book a quarter, and they're not writing it themselves. And to me, that's just diminishing, you know, the status of authors mm -hmm. all over. Now, is perplexity uh, free like like chat? I just use the free version. Now, there are a couple of things I've got the paid version for. Uh, Grammarly, I have the paid version for. And to me, that, that's AI also. I have no problem plugging something I put that I wrote into Grammarly, the paid version, and running it through that before I send it to my editor. Because my editor charges me not by the word. My editor charges me by the hour. So I want to get my work edited as, as well as possible before I give it to them to save me money. And that's a form of AI as well. Exactly. We have no problem with that. Uh, there's another form of AI I, I'm a little bit on the fence about. And, uh, oh, I, I'm drawing a blank on the name of it. I'll remember just a second. But that's Quillbot. And Quillbot is a summarizing tool. If I write something, it summarizes what you write. It takes your words and summarizes. It doesn't pull from anywhere else. It just rewords it for you. I don't have a problem with that either. But, you know, AI, as far as generating content, I really struggle with. Can you spell Quillbot? Is that one L or two? Let me go look back on my thing here. It is, without my glasses, it's hard to see. <laughs> okay. It is two L's. Quill, Q-U-I-L-L-B-O-T dot AI. Dot AI. Thank you for that. And, and I do have the paid version of that as well. Uh, start with the free version. Those are the only two I have the paid version for is our Quillbot and Grammarly. Everything else I use the free version. And the benefit of Quillbot on the paid version is? Is it takes your words and just rewrites them in a, another form. It, it doesn't draw from other sources. Gotcha. So it is taking my content and just rewriting, kind of like an editor would do. Yeah, I, was gonna say, so it's I, I use that developer. as another. Okay. Yeah, I, I use it as another editing tool. Fantastic. Well, and I, I did, Kevin, you and I mentioned this before we actually started recording today. Um, we have a policy at Davis Creative. We had to, like, over a weekend, we started getting questions about it a couple months ago, about six months ago, I guess. And we developed, um, with the help of our attorney, a AI policy, because what we had found out um, in research, researching both the U.S. Copyright Office, researching Amazon, and researching Ingram Spark, was that both Amazon and Ingram Spark are telling us that they are developing and may have already by now developed bots that will spot and can identify phrases and words, sentences, excerpts, whatever that are developed by artificial intelligence. 
The Copyright Office is saying that you cannot copyright any content developed by AI. Um, unless you are the original owner of that content, you have to, to be quoted by someone, by AI, mm -hmm. by one of those sources. So it's now a part of each of our contracts that you can use AI as much as you want for research, but if you use it verbatim, uh, you run the risk of having your book kicked out by either Amazon or Ingram. And so that's just a heads up for everybody. Yeah. And for your business, when you've got 20 people in a book and if it get kicked, gets kicked out because of one person, you know, that that is really hurting the other 19 yeah, we'll, or we'll, many you have yeah. in a book. We'll, we'll kick out that one chapter before we'll we'll let it publish. Um, so that's just a heads up. And yeah, but the thing about those tools is, you know, the tools get ahead of AI and then AI is going to get a little bit ahead of the tools and it's just going to be a back and forth game. It's a game of cat and mouse. Mm -hmm. So AI is going to get a little bit better. So the tools developed by Amazon or whoever don't detect them, but then AI will adjust and Amazon will readjust and it's just going to go yeah. back and forth forever. But yeah. the best is, there, like you said, don't use it. There are, there are some books that have gotten published through Amazon that are entirely AI and they are trying to go back and clean that out. But there are some that get snuck in. We've got a few questions here. Uh, Richard asks, are you familiar with, is it Udi, Udly? Dot yes. Mm -hmm. Lately in AppSumo. Yeah. Oh, uh, AppSumo, I get a lot of apps from AppSumo. And, and if you are not part of AppSumo, go out and grab that. Uh, Udly is fantastic. I, I use it as a speaker. I will let it record my speeches and it does all the grammar checking for me and that. And, and Udly has a tool. I haven't used it yet, but it will actually take your voice it learns your voice and then you type something in and it will speak it out in your voice so you can type in a speech and then it will deliver that speech in your voice it learns your voice wow and there are several apps that do that right now and that, that's a little scary too because uh one of the scams that people are doing they get your voice off your voicemail or they have a recording of your voice from somewhere they will call your relatives and say, I'm stuck in this and that, you know, I need $500 wired to me. And then they ask a question, they type in real quick. And then you answer the question they have. And scammers are just using AI to take scamming to a whole new level. It is really scary. It's hard to keep up with it all. Uh, Pat, did you get your question answered? Uh, she's asking if we could, re go ahead. I understand that you said that um, perplexity, you like it better because it does give you the sources. But right. with the quill bot that you're talking about, how is it different? What, how is it different or like chat GPT and why do you use that? Well, quill bot is not something that goes out and writes something. Well, you, you can actually take an article. You could use it like chat GPT, I guess. You could have it take an article and rewrite that article that somebody else wrote. But I am using Quillbot to take my own words and wordsmith them and rewrite those. Okay. And I can tell it to write it in, in an informal way, a professional way, in, in a different styles. Because I my writing style is okay. I'm an electrical engineer by degree. I'm not a writer, yet I wrote a book. And I have quirks in my writing. This helps me get rid of some of those quirks and rewords my words into a way that flows a little bit better. If you were struggling, you talked about titles, choose, letting it choose titles. Mm -hmm. I'm struggling to get a good title for a children's picture book that I'm working on. Which one would you put the text into and ask, give me some titles? I, I either chat GPT or perplexity would be good for that. You know, Thank just you. describe as much as you can, what the book is about mm -hmm. and then give me 10 possible suggestions. And you, you want to be, when you're using AI, choose as accurate of words as you can for a children's book or for children age eight to 14 or whatever that may be. Make sure you add that detail. So it, knows that when it gives you a bunch of titles. And then I would go out on Google and 
check that title, see if somebody else has that title already, make sure it's not being used. Terrific. And I did want to remind everybody, and we've been getting quite a few questions, please type in your questions when you have them and we'll get you either on live with Kevin or um, get an answer from him for you. So, so Kevin, how, how do you mostly use all of these AI tools now? Because I know you give a lot of talks and speak, you're out there speaking a lot. Tell us how you use that in what, what you do on a daily basis. I will use AI for titles for my speeches. I'm, I'm speaking to a safety professionals group in March and they asked me for a title today. And I put in a few of the highlights of what I'm talking about and said, give a possible title that will be delivered to business professionals. Uh, give me 10 possible for this. And it did, it, it generated 10 titles. I didn't like any of them. I said, give me 10 more and it did. And now I have a title that I gave them for my presentation that I'm giving to them. I don't use AI a lot other than for things like that. I, I'm using it more for research. So when I do these talks, I can help people. I, I don't want to get trapped into using AI for a lot of things. Now I have used it for recipes. I, I'm the cook in our house. And if I'm looking for a new salmon recipe or a new recipe for something else, I will say, give me 10 possible salmon recipes where the salmon is baked or it's poached or whatever it may be. And it helps me find good recipes. So I, I, I do use it for everyday things. It's great if you want to learn how to do something or not do something a lot like YouTube. It will teach you things and it comes back quicker. It's a lot better than a Google search because a Google search with AI, you have to fish through all the ads, the paid people get put on the front page and you may miss the good things. This just goes out and grabs you 10 recipes or whatever you ask for, and it gives it to you right away. A lot easier than Google for searching for information. So Richard had also mentioned lately.ai and appsumo.ai. Mm -hmm. yeah. How were those used? Uh, AppSumo is just, AppSumo, they have a bunch of apps that they sell you. If, Richard, that's, if that's the one you're talking about, and I purchase apps from them on a regular basis, and they are AI-based apps that help you with things. They will help you uh, account. They, were, they have one that replaces Calendly. I went out and bought that one because it was a one-time fee, and I bought that. They have reduced rate for legitimate apps that they're just trying to roll out and now you get those apps and you've paid for it for the rest of your life. And then they show up and later on, people are paying $20 a month, $40 a month for those apps. So they have apps for just about anything you could want to do on AppSumo. And the other one I'm not familiar with, Richard. Uh, what was that again? I'm going to look in the chat. Uh, Lately. 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 I haven't used that one. I'm going to write that down and take a look at it. Thank you. Richard, are you familiar with Lately.ai or have you used it? No, actually, I haven't. What, these are the same ones. I'm not sure which session you went to, Kevin, at, at Influence, but this is the one that Terry Brock's session, and he listed a number of similar ones you're talking about, plus the ones I just asked you. But I would, I just wrote it down because he recommended it, but I didn't really, he, he didn't explain it in depth. So I don't recall. I just thought maybe you knew. Yeah, that. I went to Terry Brock and Gina Carr's thing at Influence also. And I got AppSumo because of them. Uh, usually I was already using Lately.ai. I'm sure it was in my notes. I might have looked at it. Matter of fact, I have a bookmarked here. So I, I did look at it at one point. I just don't remember it. It okay. just nope. didn't strike no me problem. at the time. You know, I have a quick way while, I get, while I'm not muted yeah. yet. Well, if, you have the microphone. Yes. Okay. <laughs> if, you, if you were going to submit an article and want some to have them just pull tweets out for you, which would you, what platform would you use? You know, that that's one that there's a paid app that uh, Terry Brock was using and he really swears by that one. I'm trying to look and see what it is because it was expensive and I didn't get it. He got it through AppSumo and now it costs an arm and a leg to get. Okay. Uh, Cast Magic is the one he uses. 
Oh, I see it here. I got to ask him to vid it uses video use too. It does video. Yeah. But you know, that's something you you can try. I'm not sure if Udly can do that. Udly might be able to do something like that. Udly is a pretty powerful tool. Can okay, you spell that? You. Oh, Udly. The Y O O D L I. Okay. Correct. We'll, we'll add magic, each of these. We'll yeah, add these Cash these Magic videos. is a paid app that uh Terry showed us what it did at the event and it was amazing, but it is also expensive right now. So Pricing, I'm just looking at the pricing at it right now. Uh, 23 a month for five, 200 minutes a month, 59 a month for 500 and 179. Wow. He got it for a one-time fee through AppSumo of $30. Wow. So that, that's the power of AppSumo. You get these apps early and then they explode. And I noticed recently, I, I read an article where ChatGPT is now saying that um, the information that they pull that they pull together is also now pulling current information that's out there rather than from 22 or 21 like originally they that might been. be in the last couple of weeks and i don't know yeah. if that's a paid version or the free version uh because the free version last time i used it was still pulling from 2021 and later or before but uh yeah they're trying to drive you to the paid version of that too but yeah that's the other thing I really like uh, about perplexity is it is current, you know, within the last week or two. You know, if I type something about the war in the Mideast right now, it's got it. Wow. So I was also going to just, Richard, did you get all your questions answered? Okay, great. So uh, I was going to just kind of throw it out to the audience also. How is anyone here on the call? Uh, feel free to unmute and raise your hand or let us know there's enough here that how are you using it pat go ahead i i just uh, put it in the chat i've been using it to write um like blurbs for my children's books you know either to use in an amazon ad on the detail page mm -hmm. or to use on the back cover and what i'll do is i'll just put it in and ask it, and then I just tweak it myself. I don't, it's not my voice, so I don't I don't use it verbatim, but I'll go through it, and boy, it, it can come up with some really good well, things. Yeah, and, using um, it for a marketing tool is great. I've seen mm -hmm. one author who said, uh, give me the top five reasons to read and then put the title mm -hmm. of their book in, and they came up with five great, you know, within five seconds flat, five great mm -hmm. reasons, and she was using that in her marketing. So well, you, you know, another thing on books, and, and I use it this way too, is you can ask ChatGPT to give you a summary of a book, maybe a hundred pages. You don't have time to read a book. You know, I my I talk about this book all the time, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie, my favorite book. I reread it every February. But I said, type a 200 word summary of how to win friends and influence people. And it had a fantastic summary. So if you don't have time to read some books, and I know this will probably upset some authors because now you can't sell your book. People are doing that. But I have no problem asking it, especially a classic like that, and give me a summary because I don't always have time as a business person. You want to pick up the key points of certain books. If somebody tells me a book that I should read, I may go look at the summary and see if that's interesting enough for me to pick up and read. Mm -hmm. I love yeah, just, yeah, quick story on that. Well, I, when I was in high school, I was in an honors English class and we all, everyone in the class got assigned a classic to read and I got assigned so we could, and then we had to report out to the class so we could all be exposed to that book. And I had Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. And I delayed, delayed and delayed. I'm a good procrastinator. So a couple of days before it was due, I went out and bought the Cliff Notes and the Monarch Notes, and I did my report based on that. But I liked the Cliff Notes and the Monarch Notes so much that I went and read the book after that, and I thoroughly enjoyed the book. So sometimes reading that summary spurs you to read the book. Yeah, that was a big book. Let's see, Dave, yeah. you want to hop in? Uh, yes, hi. Uh, thanks for putting this on. Um, I... I just tested the water with chat GPT and I hope to write some books related to sinus problems. So I put in a simple question, what do most sinus sufferers want to know about sinuses? 
And they gave me a nice blurb, which I can use for marketing or I can use for what kind of uh, chapter content or, or divisions by chapters. Mm -hmm. So I'd throw that in. Yeah, it could give you a good outline. Uh, but here's I'm going to suggest something, too. Uh, some of you are too young to remember, but Walter Cronkite, great reporter. He reported the news, but he always said, always use at least three sources for anything you do. So instead of just going to ChatGPT, go to ChatGPT, then go to Perplexity. And then, you know, Bing has their own AI also. Go to three or four different AI things and get that potential outline. Get the, no, the points that you may maybe want to expound on. And they're all going to be just a little bit different. But now you have more information to draw from. So don't just settle on ChatGPT or don't just settle on Perplexity use a combination of AI and see how they're a little bit different and then meld those together. So now you have even better content because the more sources you have, the better content you can have at the end is synergy. Terrific. Pat, is perplexity free? Yes. Perplexity, okay, thank you. They have a paid version as well, but I just use the free version. Any other questions? So Kevin, um, if you were to summarize in words of wisdom, how to handle all this AI that's coming at us and how to use it to our benefit as authors, how would you put that into a, a short blurb, words of wisdom? Well, you know, AI is here to stay and it's moving rapidly. You don't have to use it if you don't want to, but at least go out and see what it is capable of doing, how it can maybe help you in your life, and definitely make sure you think about it. Let your moral compass be your guide. There are certain ways you can use AI that are not good, and I would strongly advise you not to go down the dark path, but <laughs> there are all kinds of fa fabulous ways you can use AI and at least explore them, know what's out there. So maybe down the road, you, know, you don't want to do it now, but at least, you know, hey, you know, I have this problem. Maybe AI can help me do this. And just keep yourself informed. Go to things like this. Read articles on AI. If you Google AI and you're on Facebook, you're going to get more AI Facebook feed things, prompts than you'll ever want. <laughs> and It'll tell you everything you'd want to know and don't want to know about AI, but at least expose yourself to it. You don't have to use it, but know it's out there. I appreciate that. Dave, you've got a, a comment to add in. Richard, was uh, saying, uh, more a question. Uh -huh. um, and and uh, th there was an article in the Wall Street Journal by um, Peter Funt, Alan Funt's son of uh, Candid Camera and all that, about letting Chat GPT and Quillbot write your book. And of course, you've said that you know that's not a good idea it mentions in the article use originality.ai to know if you're at 100 percent or 50 percent but you're saying original content and i like that that's good use other tools for doing what you need to do but it does mention in there something that may or may not be i haven't used it may or not may not be uh, ai related it's for doing uh, book covers. And it's a uh, product called Canva, C-A-N-V-A. Mm -hmm. um, and Very it says nice. free software. And is that AI related or just a whole series of content or putting together what you need to do to make a book cover and such? Canva is a pretty simple way of doing your own graphic design. It's great. But there are AI tools that generate pictures that you can bring into Canva so that there you kind of maybe cross that ethical bridge again. Uh, I have found people using a, the, the bridge on the front of my book is a picture I took up in Iowa. And I do an image search of that every once in a while. And there are people that have appropriated my bridge <laughs> picture. And, you know, people will go after you. If you go and grab somebody's picture and bring it in Canva and modify it just a little bit, there are people that will still come after you for that. And, you know, there, don't there are lawyers. Yes. There are lawyers on this planet who make their living by watching for trademark infringement. Yeah. 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 Like I talked about earlier, I'm an avid 
nature photographer, but some of my best pictures uh, are at the botanical gardens here in St. Louis of Chihuly's work. I would never try to sell one of my pictures of Chihuly's onions or anything like that because he has a whole staff that looks for that and they will come after you with a vengeance and they know how to do it and they always win. Well, and the one thing an author doesn't want to have happen, and I've seen it happen, um, for authors who decide to do their own covers and do their own books, you can end up on a bookshelf and you'll have the same piece of art that somebody else does right next to you or on Amazon in the pop-up. And you want to mm -hmm. rethink that and make sure that you want to take that chance if you are using royalty-free or free. Or I, I had... And this was somebody actually at SLPA back when I was on the board um, came in very excitedly to show us their book and they had scanned a cover of another book and used oh, as boy. theirs. And then here it was printed already. And I told them, you know, it took me a while to figure out what am I supposed to say to this human? <laughs> but eventually I did go back and I spoke with this person and I said, you know, you may want to check that out with an attorney. I don't think that's legal. I knew it wasn't legal, but I was trying to find the most tactful way to say, uh, no, that's a big mistake. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, be very careful. Yeah, yeah they, I've never used um, AI, but I'm uh -huh. curious if you go to one of these web pages, is it pretty self-explanatory that have them? So I've written a number of articles, but they're not books. They're you know five to eight hundred word articles. Um, how how do you enter that? I mean, is is there any doubt in how you would go forward having somebody like Perplexity look at Kevin, it? And give um, you feedback yeah. on it. Yeah, Kevin, we have time. I could make you. Okay. Uh, a co-host and you want to share your screen and show us how uh, to sure, do it. Happy to, and I'm, I just put my email address in there too. Uh, let me get, let me go to participants here. Okay. And I'll make you a co-host. There we go. Okay. So let share me go your screen and share a screen and maybe I'm go to the one go. you use the most perplexity or. Yeah. I'm going to go to perplexity here. Oh, it brought me to the uh, thing there. Let's see. Let's... Okay, so I'm going to go to perplexity. I just happened to, oh, I got two of Grammarly, so I will just go to AI, perplexity.ai. Okay, so the screen is pretty basic. You just type in what you want to ask it, and uh, I'm just going to say, give me... Uh, weekly menu for meals that are under, and I can't type. This is why I usually copy and paste my prompts. Under 2,500 calories per day. And I just hit enter. So here it's got a Monday menu, a Tuesday menu, Wednesday, Thursday. It's almost a Friday, but it, it's it's got a week long menu that is under twenty five hundred. Now I could say without nuts, that's gluten free, whatever I want. But now I have a week long menu, and then I can do this. I can say dinner. Uh, let's see, let me just not take that call. Let's just go look at a dinner here. And uh, dinner, one cup cooked quinoa, four ounce salmon, and steamed broccoli. So, and, and also it suggests follow-up questions. What are some, uh, that's the other thing I really like about perplexity. It gives you, it kind of thinks ahead for you or some things. So uh, provide four salmon recipes. And I'm going to say baked. And you might want to put to take 30 minutes or less to uh, make. So here I've got four salmon recipes. 
And it even gives you pictures. Flat. And it gives you pictures. And that's something that uh, ChatGPT doesn't do. Well, if you so, want to. Now, now, now mine, mine will look better than that, but because yeah. I love to cook. Chuck, but, you had a question? Yeah, I was going to say if you want to say, have your article reviewed, would you paste the entire article into that box and then it say, please review this article? Or how does it. You could say, my article. article. Now, there are, some, there are some word limits on some of them. Uh, so if you have it out there on the web and you type in a link, it will do it that way. But if you just paste in words, some of the platforms, unless you have the paid version, have. X amount of words on it, maybe a thousand, maybe whatever it is. But uh, yeah, you can just say, check this for grammar, summarize this, whatever you want to do. If you go into Quillbot, all you do is paste it on the left side and say paraphrase. It's a paraphrasing tool. Okay. Terrific. So under perplexity, you could, Kevin, you could ask it to give me a list of books that have a bridge on the cover. And then, uh, yeah. and then you could look to see who else. Yeah, so let me get back to perplexity. I got off of perplexity somehow. So give me a list of. Yeah, give me a list. Show me. Yeah. And it tells me author, and I don't know if it's going to have pictures down here or not. It doesn't have pictures, but now I can go look at those if I want. You know, I can copy and paste into Amazon or Google, wherever. Mm -hmm. I'm upset it doesn't have my book. I'm sorry. Oh, well. What are we going to do? Yeah. <laughs> that's we'll have to introduce your book to perplexity. Yeah. Oh, it, it knows my book. It's I've done that before, so. Now, does it perplexity keep a history of your questions? I know chat GPT. It, it will keep, yeah, it'll it'll have a history of your questions in that. Uh, let me see. I got this thing in the way here. Uh, add the collection or delete thread so you can keep a history of your chats so, also. Okay. So it'll go over here in your library. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and if you great. just... If you just went to Google and entered books with uh, bridges on the cover, would it be any different? Oh, yeah. Let's just go to Google and do that. Well, let, let's use the exact same words so we're not. Uh, let's see. Where was my. How did I lose that one? Let's see. Books with, did I do it down here? Did I do it after here? Let's see. Well, yeah, just... after it's salmon. No, there, I didn't it's over do it in your any... library. It's over in your library. Oh, okay. There we go. So let's copy. And we'll paste it here. So now we're going to have to sort through 50 good books with bridge title ranker. Uh, you're getting the Goodreads books. You're getting more Goodreads. So you could go down you there to, to the. You could even click on the images one that you just scrolled past. That one. Oh, the, yeah, that you can click on the images. Yeah, I can just yeah. kind of go through here and look at uh, you click view on all. that title, and it'll show them all. Yeah. Then you can scan real quick and see if anybody else is using your photo. Yeah. And now I can just kind of go through this way and I can just go on down the line. Yeah. I guess I'm not popular today. So, yeah. So you can do that, too. Terrific. So I guess, yeah, uh, the point here that I get is figure out what it is you want to do and then aim for that program that's going to help you do it the best. Mm -hmm. Because we have anything from content development in Quillbot 
to writing copy for you in perplexity and chat GPT. And then Udly, I forget what it does. Udly will analyze your grammar, your speaking. It'll tell you what your filler words are. Did you use proper grammar? Okay. If you record your speech in there, but it, it's also got a tool now in the paid version that I haven't used, I've seen used, where it will learn your voice and then you type things in. And oh, that's right. You put a picture of yourself and it will look like it's you talking even. It's, it'll take your face and make the lips oh, wow. move and it actually looks like you're talking. Well, thank you for sharing your screen. I know the, oh, no problem. I'll yeah, stop I appreciate sharing that. Right that was a, kind of an impromptu request there, but I, did we get everybody que questions answered? I'm gonna make sure we check the questions here. Dave had to jump off. A couple of people had to jump off, but um, it's been fascinating for me, Kevin. I, 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 I learn something new from you every time we talk. And Kevin did add his email there. We will also include that in the information that we send out here in a couple and of days. And if you have follow-up questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, Kevin is also can also be found at the St. Louis Publishers Association as well as the National Speakers Association. What St. Louis Publishers, the first or second Wednesday evening of the month? Second Wednesday. Online. Uh, you Online. Uh, we're going back to live starting in December, but it will be hybrid. We'll also have online available. Okay, great. And NSA is the first Friday of every month. We bring in speakers. Correct. And that's hybrid also. It's online and in person. Terrific. Well, I greatly appreciate everyone being here. Kim commented, best down-to-earth info on AI that she's heard. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kevin. I do want to thank the live audience for being here with us and watch it for our follow-up email with links to all of Kevin's information and his contact information. We'll see you next month. We'll be talking with Nancy Gear about bundling your brilliance and turning your expertise into profitable online courses. That's Thursday, November 9th, 11.30 a.m. in, in um, November. We'll only have one Lunch and Learn. That'll be the, the second Thursday, November 9th, 11.30 a.m. Thank you, Kevin. It's been invaluable information. Thank you. I greatly appreciate you. Thank you, everybody, yeah, for being here. Appreciate you, too. Thanks. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.